The next company presenting here today will be Lupum. And with us we have Einar Pontén, who is the CEO of the company. Uh, welcome, Einar, and uh, I leave the word to you. Thank you, Olivia. It's uh, nice to be part of this uh, Life Science Summit and have the opportunity to tell more about the progress in Lipo. And uh, I have prepared some slides, surprisingly. Today I will take the opportunity to, to tell you uh, how, on how we will exploit our lead candidate drug, Sol116, intended for treatment of chronic inflammatory diseases. Chronic inflammatory diseases affects millions of people worldwide. And inflammation is a natural process in the healing. And it is when this inflammation is lingering and becomes chronic, then it, the, the difficulties and the, the problems uh, decreasing the life quality uh, for the patients occur. And uh, inflammation is also, chronic inflammation is also a wide definition. More, several hundreds of millions of people are affected by, by some kind of uh, arthritis or inflammation in joints affecting their uh, normal, normal uh, uh, life quality. But we have focused so far on uh, the disease rheumatoid arthritis that affects around about 1% of the global population. And it's uh, more common among women and, and girls. And uh, the market for rheumatoid arthritis is around about 24 billion euro. Uh, the, the disease that affects children is called juvenile adipatic arthritis, and that's a rare disease, uh, decreasing the quality of life for children up to around about 16 years of old age. Lipum is a biopharmaceutical company, and we are focused on chronic inflammatory diseases. We were listed on NASDAQ First North in April, just a month ago, and um, our lead candidate, SO116, has been developed as a fully humanized monoclonal antibody, and it's now rapidly approaching uh, clinical studies. We have an experienced team on board, and the founders are still uh, significant owners of the company, around about 18%. And everything organizes from research at the U Umeå University. We intend to develop something that is completely new and different. And this is based on the, on the discovery of the molecule BSSL. It stands for bile salt stimulated lipase. It's a protein that we have demonstrated could stimulate inflammation. And for that reason, it's a unique target and will provide also a unique mode of action for treatment of chronic inflammatory diseases. This was actually discovered rather early and was, uh, that meant that a, a patent was applied for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and juvenile arthritis uh, that are granted uh, in the US and Europe and some other markets. Uh, and the priority year is 2010, and it's still pending for the inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, <clears throat> we have shown in numerous preclinical studies, ex vivo and uh, in uh, animal models, that uh, blocking BSSL has an impact on the arthritis. And in this study, this is called pristine induced arthritis model. We induced arthritis by pristine and on the control group, you can see that they develop a, a, a significant arthritis with a high scoring, while the animals that receive an anti-BSSL antibody were significantly less affected. And there are two curves that are the field marks in, in, the, in the diagram, and that represent two different ways of administration of the antibody, uh, subcutaneously and interperitoneal. 
Uh, a graph that like this illustrates with, with statistical significance the effect, but also you can very clearly see in the photos uh, on the on the foot of these animals that the controls are, uh, are significantly damaged while while the while the the animal that received the antibody and is in much better condition. So, based on this preclinical research, we have developed a monoclonal humanized uh, antibody, and that is our lead candidate, Sol one one six. It has been previously tested in, in, in uh, at least five well-recognized uh, well animal models for arthritis. And, and based on that, we developed SOL116 uh, and have established a cell line. We have established a production method. And, uh, and when the, this decision was made to finally elect SOL116, we were able also to apply for patent for the product. And, and that was with the priority of 2020. So we expect to have possibility for, for patent protection until 2040. In addition to that, we also intend to apply for an orphan drug designation, and we see opportunities also to get additional protection by uh, pediatric uh, investigational plan and special ex ex exclusivity related to uh, biologicals. Uh, our clinical development plan or our development plan for the company now is focused on bringing SOL116 to clinical trials. We have a production method, uh, and now we are about to produce in large scale uh, a quality, GMP quality of SOL116, and that is ongoing. And in parallel, we have toxicological studies ongoing. Uh, we have just passed, uh, four, uh, we are just in the middle of four weeks study in that uh, program, and we will start a 13 week study after the summer. And altogether, then we will have the uh, the material uh, for a subcutaneous injection uh, finalized beginning of next year. We will also have the toxicological studies finalized in the beginning of next year. That means that we can apply for for a, a, a clinical trial application and start the uh, phase one A study on healthy volunteers during next spring. And, and then we have in the phase one study, we have planned to run a phase one B study, and that will be on healthy volunteers, uh, adults having rheumatoid arthritis. And we wish then for uh, results that we can both monitor the clinical uh, effect by measuring biomarkers and by uh, the traditional scoring made by uh, the physicians. So this is sort of the industrial part of our development. Uh, everything is planned and everything is progressing well at the moment. And in parallel to this, then, we have a lot of earlier preclinical results from more indications. We have reasons to believe that our target molecule, PSSL, has importance for various different uh, chronic inflammatory diseases. And we have seen that there are elevated levels of BSSL in atherosclerotic plaque, uh, and uh, that is an inflammatory condition. We have seen elevated uh, levels of BSSL also in patients having fatty liver. And we have also seen in uh, studies on uh, knockout mice that, uh, that uh, the absence of uh, BSSL in a knockout mice has a protective power related to ulcerous colitis. But among all these indications we have studied most closely are of course rheumatoid arthritis and juvenile arthritis where we have a comprehensive package of data that will enable us to submit a, a clinical trial application next spring. But during the upcoming years, we now focus on, uh, in the preclinical work, we focus on studying more indications. 
So we have already uh, started a plan for, well, we have an experimental plan for ulcerous colitis and IBD, and we will look into these selected indications more in detail, while the uh, other program uh, towards a clinical verification is moving on. So we have a two-step parallel step uh, strategy for, for the next years. And we aim then for a package of data consisting of the clinical verification in phase 1b study uh, that in combination with a package of preclinical data uh, on more indications. And we think this will be attractive for partners, uh, open opportunities for co-development, uh, co-financing, getting access to a larger pharma companies, a network of clinics and patients and knowledge about more indications. There is of course also an opportunity or possibility that we could run several phase 1b studies in parallel. So we are not waiting until end of 2023 to establish uh, relationship with potential partners, that is something that is ongoing already right now. Uh, at this point, uh, there is also, of course, a potential for licensing. And there has there have been some uh, quite interesting deals in the recent years uh, for, for uh, licensing uh, with uh, upfront money in the range of 70 to sev several hundreds of uh, million dollars. And, and just recently, uh, Merck also acquired uh, Pandion Therapeutics, for, but that was an acquisition and that was 1.8 billion US dollar. And all these are in this uh, autoimmune inflammatory uh, field. So we are looking forward for value triggers. Uh, uh, we have recently, of course, we should absolutely mention that it was a very important trigger when we could apply for patent for SOL 116 and uh, that was made last summer uh, 2020. We have established a production method together with our partner Absena in San Diego and we have produced in 200 liter scale and now we are preparing for 500 liter uh, GMP uh, manufacturing for the clinical program. And the Toxicological and safety studies uh, for uh, SOL 116. Uh, uh, they are just now ongoing by our partner Charles River. And so far, everything looks good. We also have uh, some uh, collaborations, and one strategic co collaboration is with the Örebro University, where we are involved in a long term research project. Uh, looking into the importance of interleukin-1, IL-1, but the project is broader and in, in our interest is in the field of atherosclerotic plaque that relates to a, a heart attack and stroke and in, in some way also to uh, cancer. So, so that is something that was just, just recently started. And if we now have uh, looking forward, we have uh, accumulated quite a, a lot of data that from the preclinical work and from the development of SOL 116 and we intend to publish this uh, uh, during the year in the scientific journals. We will focus on more preclinical uh, studies on more indications and hope to be able to report data from these studies and we will uh, produce the GMP material for the clinical trial and uh, ultimately start then the phase one studies uh, during spring 2022. I hope I, you were, had some interest in this and uh, we welcome you to search for more information uh, on our homepage or on social media or contact us directly. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation, Einar, and uh, I have some questions for you. Uh, yeah. Do you consider Lipum's drug candidate to be a game changer? Yeah, we actually, we, we really do, because um, uh, obviously with, with 
for example, rheumatoid arthritis, where you have a, a market to worth around about 24 billion euro, there are, of course, a lot of uh, drugs in use today, both uh, small molecules and biologicals, and in fact, also uh, one of the most selling drugs uh, are Humira. Um, the, the, the most selling drug all times, actually. And, and that is an, an anti-TNF antibody. It's a, something acting on, on a TNF alpha. And uh, these drugs are dominating, but they are also well known to have uh, problems with non-responders. Around about 30% of the patients are non-responders. And approximately around about 30% also uh, stopped to use the drug after some year because of, of uh, yeah, decreasing effect and, and also because of side effects. And there are also YOC inhibitors and some other drugs that are used and as introduced, but there are few really, really new uh, uh, alternatives presented uh, that we are aware of. And uh, BSSL is uh, sort of... Uh, yeah, what you could say, a newcomer to the field uh, that has been overlooked by by other companies. And we think our pre clinical data demonstrates clearly that this could have a very interesting uh, mode of action upstream all other uh, drugs that are used today. And uh, also, we have data on, uh, on, on uh, knockout mouse, mice, the mice living without the, the BSSL molecule. And what we can see is that they are, are living just as long and, and are just as healthy as the wild type mice. So <clears throat> we have reasons to believe that inhibiting, blocking BSSL with an antibody uh, could be much less uh, negative for the immune system with less suppression of the immune system and and uh, that could also correlate then to less side effects so yes we we think sol 116 could be a game changer in treatment of chronic inflammatory diseases and uh, can you tell us a bit about the research that led to lipum's founding yeah uh, i i like uh, i like the story myself because it's a, what I call an orthogonal discovery. It was uh, uh, in, in Umeå, in the academic research, the founders of Lipen were in the field of pediatrics and were studying the nutrition of newborn children in, in breastfeeding. And, and then BSSL was discovered as a, an enzyme important for the fat absorption by the, by the, by the infant. But much later, when they were studying uh, BSSL molecule, the discovery it was also present in the circulation. And, and when they were looking into this in more in detail, they discovered that uh, BSSL was at elevated levels in, in places where you could find inflammation, for instance, in, in fatty liver and in a sclerotic plaque. And, and that was... Uh, the reason why the, the founders and the researchers decided to look into this more in detail and could then later on verify in, in uh, numerous of, uh, animal models that BSL plays a role in, in, in inflammation, just as I showed you before. Very interesting presentation and uh, thank you for joining us today, Einar. Thanks a lot, my pleasure.